So I just pulled my truck into the barn here. And it does not smell good. You can see all smoke here. I think we got a rear brake sticking issue. I mean, you don't feel it, but you smell. I can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it cooling down. See if it's, I guess see if it's smoking from the other side, because maybe it's like activating both brakes or it's just a sticking brake. Holy cow. Well, it's a good thing we were only driving to town 15 minutes. Who knows, that could cause a fire if I were to be driving to Toronto like I use this truck for all the time. You can hear it cooling down. So in this uh, unexpected episode, I guess we'll be diagnosing a brake issue. Just listen. That's not even the sound of metal cooling down. What is that? So I, I'm not trying to be a judge of my driving, but I know compared to friends and family that I've driven with, I'm not hard on the brakes at all. So it's not, it's not a driver error. This is a mechanical error. It's really making noise I can now. feel the heat on my face from the smoke coming through. So as we already addressed, um, the brake is sticking on the back passenger side, or back driver's side, the rear driver's side. Uh, wheel so We're gonna just lift it up off the ground just here not with a hoist just take tires off See if we can address it on the ground if it's gonna be a bigger job. We're gonna move over to the hoist But let's hope it's small uh, Let's hope I didn't warp my rotor or smoke them or whatever you call that and let's hope I don't need any new parts because That's another few days and my truck's not gonna be drivable So uh, let's get right to it So now that the camera's on the right side, we're gonna just jack this up, right away take the wheels off and diagnose it. I have no idea. 150 pounds maybe? 120 for sure. You can smell it, even though it was yesterday. I can smell brakes just standing up here. Um, I'm not a brake expert. It's rusty because Canada, but it, lo it looks like it has newer pads actually if you I don't think you can this film is, This is new hardware, this is sure. Yeah, so it has new pads. Oh. Well, that's not stuck. So we had a professional uh, farm mechanic take a look, because he works here. And uh, he said, likely it's one of the two pistons, or both. He said, uh, if you're going to end up replacing the calipers, replace both. So we'll take it off just to check anyways. Either way, it's going to come off. And uh, we're going to take it off now. So apparently, this is a good way to check if they are good or not they should go consistently in so helps if the cameraman would help but well that one feels pretty not moving well I've uh, I'm not a brake expert but 
I'm squeezing pretty dang hard on these. And neither one are moving. So, uh, I guess that means it's time to replace. So we're just gonna put it back together, just loose, not to spec, but just so we can move the truck around in here. And then uh, I guess we'll go over to Napa, our favorite parts store, and order up uh, some new calipers. So we're gonna put, uh, we're just gonna put one wheel on, just because we're obviously not gonna drive it with uh, really terrible, potentially fatal brakes. So just to be able to move it around, we're just gonna put one rim on. I'll put it on backwards just for fun. I really like that look. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna just put one wheel back on the other side, just run it like that. We'll be right back. Napa's just down the road. It's very quick. Two hours later. Uh, somebody's pressure washing in here, if you can hear it. So to make our lives easier, and so that you can actually hear what we're doing, we're gonna go to the other shop, and it has a hoist, so that, that'll make our lives quite a bit easier. Uh, we're at the hoist, just lining up the arms. Let's get this thing done. So this is our uh, tool vehicle for now. Um, we brought everything we think we needed because our my, my toolbox is in the other building and there's not like a concrete thing I can bring in between here. So I just brought what I needed. Most of the work we do, we can just with, do without a hoist. So I'm taking my super single off on this side and my duals on the other side. So we got new uh, brake pads as well. You might as well while you're taking everything apart. So these are the new pads. We just put the clips on. I think we put them on the right way. We'll find out when we try to put it on. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, for me, it's a trial and error thing. Luckily I got Chris who's done brakes before because I've never done brakes. I've only helped people who know what they're doing with brakes do brakes. So it's a little, a little bit of a learning experience. Okay, how does this work? So now we're at the next step. We're putting the actual caliper on. Um, yeah, so if you get one of these started, you get a few threads on, and then the other one should just line up. So if you're doing this on the ground, you definitely want a set of hands. Um, if you really want to be accurate, you can check your torque spec for this stuff. I don't know if something like this would be in the manual, but I'm sure it's online somewhere. Um, so the way I kind of do torque is look how thick the bolt is that normally indicates how much uh, like force that is going to be on that bolt. So generally the thicker the bolt, the harder you go. Um, but you can also tell by how hard it was to take off. And even these 21 mil bolts here, they weren't that hard, so just go in between snug and tight. Most of the can shops just use impacts on everything, so I don't think you can trust them. So now we're gonna quickly get the bolt on because it's been leaking like nuts the whole time. So the, the less fluid you leak, the better. Because it's less fluid you gotta put back in. Just make sure that's clean. This would be a nice spot for one of those uh, Milwaukee uh, sponsorships that we don't have. <laughs> but we could be showing your products right about now, but we're not the boss garage. It's okay to use your ratchets as a hammer, but don't try to use your hammers as ratchets. Um, obviously this is the same as that side, so we're just gonna time lapse it. Let's say that first side took 45 minutes, this side took 10. So it's like way quicker. 
Um, just make sure you have at least, man, get a whole bag of spill dry because you probably will need it. Well, we're done ish. Well, we got the pa we didn't bleed the brakes yet. That's all we got to do, but it's late. Pizza has arrived at the house, so uh, that can be done tomorrow. Tomorrow. So uh, right now, it's time to bleed the brakes. So we got some Napa, Napa brake fluid. Um, the thing in there looks a little dry, so I'm a little concerned because that could mean we lost a lot of fluid and that could mean we need to bleed all four corners. We'll see. So this takes a while. Um, I didn't do any research on whether it's different for a gas vehicle or a diesel vehicle, but we're doing the same we do our gas vehicles. We got one bled, so I was thinking like, cause diesel trucks, the brakes don't really work that well unless it's running because of your vacuum booster or whatever you call that thing. But it's, uh, it works for bleeding, I guess. You don't need it. So that took us literally, oh, the one took a lot longer. The one took side took maybe five minutes at the most the other side took like like I, I pumped it ten times bled it and it was already done like so that was probably the easiest brake service we've done we've, we've had to bleed brakes in the past and sometimes it takes like an hour and we can never get it so yeah that's good so wheels are on and torque that's all done so uh, always take your vehicle for a test drive after brakes are done. So we'll do that and should be the end of the video now. Unless something goes wrong, then the video will continue with the carnage.